Hey everybody, as I adjust the microphone and make a bunch of damn racket while I'm doing it, you are listening to the Free Matt podcast, not the Freeman podcast. Or the Fremont. <laughs> or Fremont, or the Padcast, or whatever the other ones we've com- completely screwed up on. As always, I am Matt Fremont, and as always, on my constitutional right, or my positive right. Better analogy. The one and only General Patrick Flynn. Hello, everybody. How you be? How you be? Hello, governor. That was brought to you by my favorite... Oh, that's even better. Whoops. Oh, that's even better. (laughs) Yeah. Even libertarians throw aluminum cans around sometimes. Well... There wasn't a free market solution to... It's, uh, if anybody wants to know, it's an oatmeal raisin cookie brown ale. It's from Cigar City Brewing Company, and they're out of Tampa. So, just... That's the noise you heard. Out of... I was trying... What was the... My, my funny joke was... Because the Libertarians have not found a solution to the aluminum can yet. <laughs> well, a free market will determine it. I'm like we should be drinking it out of like a space bag, like what? Oh, wine, that would that like would be wine fun. comes out of. Yeah, that would be fun, like a space bag. And, like, hey, what's in your it's, space it's bag? It's basically like, a, and for those that don't know, it's basically like an IV bag almost. And that's what wine comes in. Wine in a box is actually wine in a bag. It's called space bag. All the like, I know some hipsters. This guy we call Sticks, which is actually a dope name. But Sticks used to drink. He told me about space bag. I'm like, what the fuck, space bag? He goes. It's wine. It comes in a bag. <laughs> because, man, you can just pick that bag up in the air, and then when it's, like, half full, you can stick it in your pocket. <laughs> space bag. Man, that'll make space bag for beer. Space bag, coast to coast. I'm Zorak, damn it. <laughs> Zorak made that show. I don't give a fuck what... I don't give a fuck what Space Ghost, Space Ghost said. It's Zorak. Their in- Space Ghost engineer was Moltar. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, the worst engineer in the world. Well, speaking of engineering, or not speaking of engineering, our first item to uh, dissect and turn into small pieces from the New York Times. This was March 22nd, 2018. Obviously, today isn't March 27th, but it was a damn good article. We want to discuss it. Let's John Paul Stevens repeal the Second Amendment. It's not too late to discuss this, folks. You know why? Because we said so. <laughs> and that's the bottom line, the free podcast said so. The, the free man podcast said so, and I really screwed that up. Oh, yes, you did. Glenn Jacobs thinks I'm okay. Drink your beer and hush. Glenn Jacobs, running for mayor in Tennessee, he's dope. Oh, Kane, yeah, that's right. That Yeah, he is. He's actually a Ron Paul supporter last time I heard. Glenn Jacobs would vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I would, I'd like, I want to become a citizen of Tennessee just to vote in that one thing. Just so I could say I put a wrestler in office. And you could run as General Patrick Flynn... And then you never claim to be an actual, like, military veteran. <laughs> You're like, I never claim to be a military veteran. I'm like, oh, you're General Patrick Flynn. Well, that's what Free Matt, Matt Free Matt calls me. Because I got this podcast <laughs> and this guy that I know. <laughs> in an unnamed bunker somewhere in North Alabama. Well, anyway, speaking of unnamed bunkers, John Paul Stevens said, repeal the Second Amendment. <laughs> He's the one driving us into the un- unmarked bunkers. And it says, John Paul Stevens, repeal the Second Amendment by John Paul Stevens. All right. Rarry am- r- oh, r- 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 Great start, my rah, man. Rah, rah, rah. Ooh, rah, 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 rah. Okay, that's a Lady Gaga joke. Uh, rarely in my lifetime have I seen the type of civic engagement School children and their supporters demonstrated in Washington and other major cities throughout the country this past Saturday. A free Matt note. They mentioned about uh, revealing a broad public support for legislation to minimize the risk of mass killings of school children and others in our society. 
That support is a clear sign to lawmakers to enact legislation prohibiting civilian ownership of semi-automatic weapons. And it says, uh, goes on to talk about different laws regarding uh, ownership and things like that, background checks, what have you. But the demonstrations should seek more effective and lasting reform. They should demand a re a actual repeal of Second Amendment. Concern that a national standing army might pose a threat to the security of the separate states led to the adoption of that amendment. Uh, we're, we're actually looking for the low lives here, the low lights. Today, that concern is a relic of the 18th century. For over 200 years after the adoption of the Second Amendment, it's uniformly understood as not placing any limit on either federal or state authority to enact gun control legislation. During the years when Warren Burger was our Chief Justice, uh, that was Chief Justice Warren Burger. There's a reason why I like saying that. From 1969 to 86, no judge, federal or state, as far as I'm, uh, as far as John Paul Stevens was aware, expressed any doubt as to the limited coverage of that amendment. When organizations like the NRA, National Rifle Association, not National Restaurant Association, that is the other NRA, disagreed with that position and began their campaign claiming that federal regulation of firearms curtailed Second Amendment rights. Chief Justice Berger publicly characterized the NRA as perpetrating, uh, and this is in quotations, one of the greatest pieces of fraud, I repeat the word fraud, on the American public by special interest groups that I've ever seen in my lifetime. All right, in other notes, in 2008, the Supreme Court overturned Chief Justice Berger's and others' long-settled understanding of the Second Amendment limited reach by ruling and that was D.C. versus Heller, that there was an individual right to bear arms. Of course, John Paul Stevens was among four of the dissenters. It says, I was among the four dissenters, but not only am I, you know, one, not one of the dissenters, I don't believe General Patrick Flynn, the true, the true stallion of liberty, was a dissenter. Because not only in, in 2008 did he, was he not a member of the high court, he was, well, he wasn't a lawyer. <laughs> no. He wasn't a dress-wearing friend. <laughs> but one thing I do agree with in this article is when they talk about the the uh, the NRA having a propaganda piece, I do kind of agree with that somewhat because the, the NRA, they do a lot of good and, and a lot of good promotion about gun safety, so I'm not, I'm not knocking that in, so I want to make that clear. But I do kind of feel that they use fear to, to promote what they do as a whole, it's it's like every everything they do is like the government's coming to get your guns, this, that, and the other. I don't really agree with that. I think it's a a form of verbal coercion, really. It's 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 uh, fear mongering. I guess would be the right word. It's the what the, is it the storm effect? Not stormy. The storm mm, effect. That's a different kind of effect. I like that uh, effect. Oh, uh, she. By the way, a uh, little side note unrelated to this article. She was in a in a uh, adult film called. The Perfect Stormy. Yes, she was. Because there was a actual movie called The Perfect Storm, which had nothing to do with blonde women, but it was actually about a real storm and fishermen who died. Hmm. But That's a Perfect George, Stormy. George Clooney, Mark Wahlberg, if I remember right. And I don't believe Stormy Daniels is anywhere to be found. Ah, unfortunately she wasn't. I saw that movie. <laughs> All right. Unrelated to Stormy Daniels, back to the article. That decision, which I remain convinced was wrong and certainly was debatable, it's a nice uh, reframe, wasn't it? It has, was. Has provided the NRA with a propaganda weapon of immense power. Boom! All right, uh, we're skipping uh, over and through here. That simple but d dramatic, <laughs> dramatic action would move Saturday's marchers, and that was a while ago, uh, closer to their objective than any other possible reform. It would eliminate the only legal rule that protects sellers of firearms in the United States. And here, here's something I, uh, Matt Fremat, will, he, he failed to notice, and this is something that he's giving the NRA on a national level might be neutered by such a, a, a notion. 
But the irony is, rights not enumerated in the Constitution are left to the states. And I'm paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing, folks. I believe it was the Tenth Amendment. If I'm wrong, guys, I, I, I will put a retraction. We'll, 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 we'll give some after notes. But one of the weirdest ironies is, if a Constitution doesn't cover something, generally speaking, it's up to the states. Now... You really want to, you want to like, you know, drop this place like another Vietnam? Back up, son. Give me room. Give me room. You will see what happens when you'll probably have states that you'll have a, a real crisscross of state laws. You'll have, you know, places like Alabama and, you know, there's a couple of, you know, uh, Texas or whatever. And probably Florida too. People have autom- either automatic weapons or people be able to, you know, some states where you you may or may not have automatic weapons. Which I don't think is a bad thing. Well, I think, I think everything short of like a freaking RPG is a good idea. I want a 50 cal on my roof, to be honest with you, for the wise acres. <laughs> Well, you see, I kind of like what uh, Austin Peterson said. You know, if you, if you repeal the Second Amendment, then repeal all the other acts underneath it, and you're basically making America fully automatic again. And so if you're going to go one way, then go, like, all the way toward liberty. Why not? I want a parade where not only do our, like, junior ROTC people don't march with M14s like they used to, I want them to march around with, like, Russian RPGs instead. A saw. <laughs> oh, a yeah. saw. Just a saw. <laughs> you know, a big hump gun. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, it's just... I don't... You know, I'm not saying that every single person should own a firearm or every single person should own a, a semi-automatic or, or whatever. I just firmly do not trust government officials... At all. And it's like, I would rather have 10,000 weapons in the world that the free people have as opposed to only having 3,000 and only the government and their agencies have them. Because that's just the way I feel. I, I, I think, well, they're... I, I think that everybody's like, oh, we should just pull the Second Amendment. I was like... Do you know what happens when you don't? I mean, when you do something like that? It puts it back into the hands of the state. And you have some wiseacre states. You have places that honestly don't give a crap. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you easily could have a real state's militia. You could, like, the way that the National Guard used to be was the National Guard used to be the state's army. Mm -hmm. Our, our National Guard, in, 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 in the, in the cool state of Somalia. Now they're like the B team. <laughs> yeah. And, and it used to be that the, the, you know, it used to be the governor's private army. And yeah, you could have them going parades, throwing out sandbags or shit like that. But back in the day, it used to be a real deal. National Guard used to be like, it used to be representative of, you know, the wiseacres and the rednecks of your state. Now it's not, but. You can still get called up, but anyway. Uh, so I'm wondering if they, uh, you, you spoke about militias and if they actually, in a, some world that, you know, that they managed to repeal this crap, I wonder how many militias would actually show up after the, that repeal is done. Which, and again, I'm not saying they do. I'm just wondering what if, you know, kind of like a Marvel comic. What if series? <laughs> I think it would be dope. Hmm. Support your local boys, you know. Like a, the one time you see a bearded guy in the army. <laughs> you know, the Somalia Volunteer Libertarian Army. Or the North Alabama Volunteer Somali Army or whatever. <laughs> hey, you never know. You never the know. The Honduran Irishman Republic Army. <laughs> oh, crap. The Honduran Irishman. <laughs> Coke and hookers for everyone. A hooker on every pole, even yours. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh man. In in doper news. <laughs> Speaking of cocaine, in doper news, 
The Libertarian Republic, uh, next article, Jennifer Fisher. I like that name. That's a nice everyday name. Fish! Seems like somebody you could work with. Maybe, maybe. Well, I don't know. That not have to be hot. It also it. seems like a Jada Pinkett Smith character she played in Gotham, but, you know, it's neither here nor there. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, back to the article when we, <laughs> instead of pondering the deeper, deeper mysteries, uh, Libertarian Republic reports, and obviously it was Jennifer Fisher, before I repeat that about three times, Jennifer Fisher, Jennifer Fisher, Libertarian Republic reports, <laughs> Professor Jordan Peterson warns against the dangerous narrative of victimization. And, yes. <laughs> University of Toronto psychology professor Jordan the Bomb Peterson. Jordan, don't call me. I thought the Bomb Peterson. Could no, no, no. Be uh, what's his face? Uh, Jordan, don't call me Austin Peterson. <laughs> yeah. Because they're spelled differently. Okay. Um, okay. Bad joke. Yeah, it was. Called the narrative of victimization dangerous. A dangerous thing. Oh, that's even better. A dangerous thing. And said it's being pushed on colleges, co- colleges, mm-hmm. college campuses all around the world, all around the world. Um, and this is a quote from, I think that came, all around the world, statues crumble for me. Who knows how long I've loved you. <laughs> 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 Sugar Ray, that's who it is. <laughs> I just wanna fly. Okay. Spread your love on fly. Oh, shit. That's shit, <laughs> shit clownery right there. Yes, it was. I think that Cand. Speaking of shit clownery, I think that Candace Owens is commenting about the danger of adopting a victimization oppressor narrative, and it's a narrative that's the, that the hard left has really been pushing ever since Marx. And I believe it's Karl Marx, not Groucho. It was. It not was. Groucho. I, well, you know, it's not the wackiest thing I ever heard. <laughs> As I chop on my cigar and wear my giant freaking eyebrows. They and, were big. They were big. Uh, and that was on Fox News. That was a quote from uh, Jordan Peterson himself. Uh, that the world is composed of those who are victimized and those who are the oppressors. And everyone successful is an oppressor and everyone else is a moral victim. Like a morally acting victim, he had said. It's a very, very dangerous narrative, he added. And it's certainly one that is unbelievably widespread on university campuses. To look at the... You're welcome. To look at the world that way... To look at the world through a world identity lens puts us back in a tribal situation and will produce conflict. I actually, you know, kind of get where he's going with the tribal thing. I really do. That's one thing I do agree on. It's just... It's funny because I, I, I... People call it virtue signaling. They're like, yeah, I helped. I helped. What the fuck? Virtual thing like I helped three people. I had, I helped three poor people today cross the road. You know, like virtual si- virtue signaling. Ah, like, oh, okay. Like, oh, I've got. Hey, some of my best friends are black, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, some of my best friends are Honduran Irishmen. <laughs> 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 like it's virtue signaling, but I call it victim signaling. Like when you're like, well, Honduran Irishmen have been racist against me. You know. Since when? All the time. Because I'm not a Honduran Irishman. You don't have an ass either, so yeah. I'm a honky American. They they hate honky Americans. Do we? You're Honduran Irishman. Why wouldn't you? But, uh, P-A... Oh, damn it. I, I had it that was gone. Rewrite. Done. It... How do I word this? Um, P-A-W-G. Fat ass white girl. <laughs> Fat ass white girl. <laughs> pog. Pog. Not poke or pong, but pog. And well, we're not talking about you know the dairy airs on women. We're <laughs> should we do a <laughs> podcast on that? Yes. <laughs> we're. 
because I, I really goofed this one up, but guys, <laughs> the <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Peterson, he obviously, he probably is a lot more nicer than I am. I'm like, you're not, here's, here's my end of it. You are not going to be successful when you feel like a victim. When, if you feel like a master, a master of your own circumstance and a master of, of variables, then you will be successful. Then, you know, not a conqueror, you're gonna, you will find success when you, when, when the, the crossroads of all those, those things come together. Your, your life will look like a Chick-fil-A waffle fry where everything comes together for greasy goodness. Yes. Peanut oil or, or coconut oil for me because well, I love coconut And oil. also, when, when you change your mindset from being, uh, from going away from being a victim, then you kind of start thinking, well, it's all in my control and whatever I decide is, is how this outcome is going to be. And that gives you a sense of empowerment. It really does. Self empowerment. You will not be successful. When you think somebody's always kicking you, or that you can't do something, when you feel like you're getting kicked, and you're like, I can't do this, somebody's kicking me, I can't do it. You need a, you, you know, inspirational moment here, you know, I'm like, you know, old woman cuddly here. No, we're not. I, I'm just, I'm telling you, you, you will be successful when you say, you know, well, just you'll 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 be you'll be there. You'll say, "Look, this is great. I'm doing great." And yeah, I know that sounds cheesy. I'm like worse than Tony Robbins here. Well, it's and and if you start doing stuff, you'll find the motivation. And action breeds motivation. And not blaming somebody else. Like, Lord, there's plenty of things. There's plenty of things. Like, I guarantee if you ignore these naysayers and like, oh, I can't do X because of this. I'm like. Look, you know how many, like, a Ben Carson, I'll give you a great so Ben Carson, he, he was a poor black guy. If he took everybody's word about how crappy his circumstance was and, you know, like, oh, I'm being oppressed, I'm black or whatever, it's a freaking neurosurgeon. Well, screw you. That's what he said. <laughs> he went to freaking med school. It's a smart kid who went to med school. Guarantee, well, you're being oppressed, you know? They ought to have a program for this. You know what he did? He went to freaking med school and became a neurosurgeon. Hell, I don't care if he became a pedi the 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 guy who opened the doors at the pedi- pediatrician's cleric cl- oh, cleric cleric the <laughs> clinic the pediatri- pediatrician's clinic in freaking Baltimore, Maryland. All right, and was the guy who held the doors open. You know what? That dude he just didn't give a shit. He freaking did it. You know. I'm like, you quit being a victim. Oh, yeah, we're poor. Oh, yeah. That's a mindset. It's, look, I've known people who were broke. And the and the woman blatantly told me, I got a job and I got a family. We helped her fix her house. But she told me she wasn't poor because she had a family and she had a house. And we had to help fix her house because the freaking roof leaked. But I'm gonna tell you this much. She, she, she didn't, look, she didn't, she wasn't a victim. She was happy. Quit being a victim. And you know what? Teaching people to be victims? You're gonna get stomped by people who don't think they're victims. And even people who don't wanna stomp you will end up stomping you. You know why? Because they don't think they're victims. Because you're the people, you're the, the people who put themselves under somebody's shoe is what you're doing. Like, you're stepping on me? Look, like, don't give me the freaking idea and don't get under my shoe. I want you to be successful. You know, I don't like, you know, I don't want you, I don't want everybody to be my boss, but I want you to be your own boss. I want you to earn enough money to go pay, you know, but pay your house off. F you money, people. F you money. Heck, just doing, doing better money. Like, Ten dollars on the sidewalk, time for coffee time, you know? Ooh, coffee. And that, uh, quick coffee break was brought to our, brought, brought to you by our fake sponsors. Dunkin' Donuts Macchiatos. <laughs> well, 
It was at, screw that one up. I was going to say, our fake sponsors, Laughing Somali, Somali brand coffee. From the hills outside of Mogadishu to your mouth. Please drink Laughing Somali, Somali brand coffee. (laughs) There we go. All right, outside of that dangerous segue there, (laughs) you know, besides uh, General Patrick Flynn's used tampon company. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lord. The best thing for a nosebleed. (laughs) Yeah, just... Anyway, folks, those were our quick pipe hitting. The the quick we hit a pipe. The I'm not high yet. <laughs> I know it's like the, the pipe hitting members of the tribe prescribe to those news those news hits. Okay, like one hitters, like like the the people that smoke out of the old light bulbs. I think that was an early, that was a late 90s thing. That was a late 90s thing. Smoking and it was, uh, light bulbs. They actually used that in, uh, I, you ever seen the show Banshee? It was a oh, gr- I love that. It was a yeah. great show. Yeah. It's like the, the last, um, the last season they brought in Elijah Dushku and she was supposed to be the, uh, the FBI I saw agent. That. Dude, I have got it on my Amazon Prime. Come by the house. Not Amazon Prime. It, the last one? Yeah, but you have to, because it's a Cin- Cinemax series, you have to pay for it, and I love the show, so I wanted to see how it ended. Come by my house, we will binge watch that shit. Elijah Dushku. Can you uh call the border guards and tell them to put in a good word for me? Sure, I damn sure can. I damn sure can. I'm not really. I, I, General has clout. General has clout. And um, she was an FBI agent, and she ended up... Uh, of course, she was a undercover agent, and she kind of got in on on the uh, the crystal meth and all that stuff. And they actually had her to to use it and hit on it through a light bulb. It was funny. It's old school. Yeah, I miss those days. You know, like our meth heads these days don't have any dignity. They smoke out of aluminum foil and stuff like that. But I'm gonna tell you, folks. You know, I remember. Back in the good old days when our meth heads used to smoke out of light bulbs. And the thing is, paraphernalia crimes, like having drug paraphernalia, that wasn't a big deal. But now they made it such a big crime, they throw people in jail for it. I want us to bring dignity back to smoking meth. <laughs> oh, damn. Like, I want us to clear all of like the death row cases right now and focus on important things. Like, reforming paraphernalia law. Hmm. That people smoke left hand. I would like the thing is back in the day. But what if you're left handed? That's the only way you smoke. <laughs> well, like you're in a circle of people. I think we always used to pass from the right. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what was that like? On uh, I think it was Chris Tucker that one day. Puff puff pass. Puff. I'm puff, saving your life. Puff puff pass. Oh, I got, I got one. I got one better. I want to see it was Peter Tosh that said, pass the Ducci from the left-hand side, pass. I never freaking, how many times I remember smoking back in the day. And yes, uh, Matt Freeman, the defender of the faith, at one time smoked the old left hand. And the funniest thing is we never, I remember, passed from the left hand. You would reach over with your right hand and pass it. And pass it on, you know, you'd pass it to your constitutional right. Now, the General Patrick Flynn wasn't there at the time. There was other people like the Good Doctor or Johnny Leopard Head or people like that. Yeah, Johnny Leopard Head, he had a, uh, he had a, uh, skateboard ramp in the backyard. Never saw him. Not like a full vert ramp? It was, yeah, it was like two, um. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was huh. like, I didn't even know the people in the backyard. They just show up. Yeah. But, yeah, he was a scratcher who used to do tattoos and stuff. He wasn't that bad. But uh go to, I don't know if it was his place or not. We were in the basement. And they were playing, actually, of all things, playing Tony Hawk. Mm. The original Tony Hawk. Not surprising. Those were the days, people. But, anyway, uh we are going to wrap it up with... You know, obviously some liberty, outside of, you know, dope smoking and smoking meth out of light bulbs, we're going to leave you with some libertarian wisdom. As always, I want you to live and love within the 
frames of liberty. Negative and positive rights. I want you to love one another. Success and failure are, are things that govern your behavior. Now, obviously your abilities to make money and not, not having, you know, this, this framework or this, this parachute holding you up. I got my hands up here, but that should govern you. That should drive, you know, drive your behaviors. Other, how you deal with other people in, in, in honesty in your word are things that would replace the government in the laws or what have you. There's not some, some diktats. There's some diktats or that's like a Russian. Diktats. D- diktats. That's like a flavor of Sonic. Would you like some diktats? D-I-K-T-A-T-S. It's like a Russian word, like for a rule. But it's it's something like a bureaucrat would dream up and like you know throw it in your face. Like That's the stuff that holds you back. That's it's garbage. How you be, how you how you govern your own behavior and how you react and you deal with others is what would you know would drive your success or your failure. Your behavior, success and failure. Thank you. You know that's the whole the whole nine yards. But yeah, uh, without that. Freaking ramble there. Um, uh, I will say just for shits and giggles, I was drinking Cigar City Brewing Oatmeal Raisin Cookie. And as people walk around in my unmarked bunker. And I get the last beer and about to hand it to you. Do you want it now or do you want it later? I will have it now. But guys, I speak for myself. Uh, obviously, General Patrick Flynn... When he's able to, he speaks for himself. <gasps> I'm speechless. <laughs> uh, when he's not flogging dolphins in China. Flogging Molly, damn it. F- dolphins in China. There's a guy stealing a dolphin in China. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I don't know what law he was bringing. It was hilarious. He was walk- just This dude did, did not give one fuck. And he just put a baby dolphin over his shoulder and walked off with it. No shit. Yeah. But, uh, How the in, fuck is that dolphin? Well, no, okay, never mind. Go ahead. With, with or without dolphins, or putting them over your shoulder, I want to wish you the best within liberty. Bless you and have a good night. Bye.